Hey Scorpio, welcome to your bonus reading. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Hope you're doing good. I hope this reading finds you well. Scorpio, however you connect with the Scorpio energy, you're welcome here. If this is for your sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign or node and south node, uh, yeah, you're welcome here. So make sure to like and subscribe and let's dive right in. Let's see. What do we need to know, Scorpio? <laughs> okay. Five of Wands at the bottom of the deck and the Ten of Wands as general energy. I'm laughing because when I was, um, you know, just grounding myself before the reading, those two cards literally flew out of the deck. And I was like, okay, interesting, but they really want to come through, so I'm honoring that. Ten of Wands right now for me feels like there's this list of things that you have to do. You're checking things off your list and it feels like you're making space for newness in a way. Of course, tens are about completion. Ten of wands, there's this big intensity, a lot of fire. It could be the end of something that has been draining you out. Or again, finally checking the final thing off your to-do list, things that you've been putting off. Like, okay, I'm going to do this another day. Um, I don't feel like doing that. It's like, okay, something is complete. Now let me make space for newness. I have more time, more energy for something new. And the five of wands being at the bottom of the deck, and I really want to honor this card because if you know me, you know I love the challenging cards in the tarot. I don't believe in positive or in negative in the tarot. I feel like the five of wands has been feared by so many all the fives in the tarot really and there's something so potent and magical about this energy really because it's connected to the heart space it's connected to passion and sometimes you know life gets in the way and it's not possible for us to live and breathe from our passions some people have to go to work. Some people have to do things that they're not necessarily passionate about, which kind of gets me back to this to-do list. Um, you might be making space for the things that you love doing. Passion being in the driver's seat of your life. And that is easier said than done. It comes with so much challenges to, you know, not only living from our passion, but maybe eventually being paid for that, you know, or being compensated in any way, not just financially, but energetically. So there's there's so much coming through right now because I saw the five of wands and the ten of wands together. So let's see what this is about. I keep thinking about your heart space and some type of inner battle. I know I have to do this, but this is not what I want to do. This is not what my heart wants. Um, interesting that I'm sensing that. Look, <laughs> the sun is here. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we have here. The justice card and the sun card. This is exactly what I've been talking about. So, you are working. It seems like on. Finding balance when it comes to doing the things that you have to do and making space for the things that you love doing. So Scorpio, I'm going to ask you, what makes your heart sing? What feels like a natural thing for you? What are you passionate about? What can you spend hours on and you don't count the minutes, you don't count the hours, times just fly by? Um... I know this is how I feel about tarot. This is how I feel about being a musician and, um, you know, my connection to magic and witchcraft. There's so many things that personally I feel like they help me forget that time even exists, which is a gift. It's a huge gift. And it seems like you're making more space for those types of things in your life. Um, 
And again, there was some type of decluttering that needed to happen, either energetically or literally decluttering or checking things off your list. So the justice card, depending on what type of tarot you read, um, is kind of the heart of the whole major arcana. Um, there's this central energy to it. You know, there's 22 major cards and this is number 11 in the Rider Waitsmith, of course. There's this halfway done with something or this balanced place. Um, it's not perfect and we're not looking for perfection, but we're doing a pretty damn good job at balancing, again, the to-do list and the things that makes our hearts sing and maybe that sounds very cheesy but um it's our job to make space for those things in our lives and the sun card is here which of course a lot of people are obsessed with that card and there's this beautiful side to it but every time i see the sun card i receive this message of don't burn yourself out and since the Justice card is here again, it's beautiful. Finding balance and not burning yourself out with the Ten of Wands also. There's a lot of fire. There's a lot coming through. And even when we're focused on doing the things that we love, um, we still have to recharge. We still have to pause because we could end up feeling depleted or burned out. So... I think that in the next four to six weeks, you're not only finding ways to be more balanced, but you are achieving more, you know, balance in your life. And it seems like it's good. You feel like the energies are reciprocated. It's not just you giving and giving. There's something coming through that feels like some type of reward. Reward, sorry. Okay. Hermit is here. So the first row is three major cards. When I see that as a reader, I know that the next four to six weeks, which is what I'm reading about today, you're going to remember. It could be a very impactful, beneficial time for you. And the hermit, the work that you do in hermit times, it's not necessarily about isolating yourself. It's not necessarily about going in traditional, quote-unquote, hermit mode. I feel like the hermit work sometimes we have to do surrounded by a bunch of people. It is whatever we're learning about ourselves that makes us wiser. The lessons that we learn, the, the introspection, especially with the Queen of Cups next to it, there's something about introspection here. And notice that the Queen of Cups has a closed cup, a very beautifully crafted cup. It kind of fits perfectly with the Hermit and the fact that we're in Virgo season still, but it is closed. Something is asking you to open up. So maybe you are in a time where you feel like isolating yourself helps you stay focused on the things that you have to do. In the next four to six weeks, there's going to be this opening up, this calling to open up. And there could be the opportunity to reconnect with old friends, the opportunity to share, receive, be seen. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's some type of co-creation, collaboration that could be um, happening for you. And it seems like, again, it's helping you like open yourself up in some way it could be that you're meeting someone who shares similar experiences someone that's going through the same same type of era energy um interesting you know queen of cups is double water it's deep it's the deepest part of the ocean it's the unknown it's the things that we fear and the intense feelings and all of that. So I'm going to be honest, I'm still thinking about the five of wands I saw earlier. And I think that there could be hidden feelings, which is not something I usually say in my readings, but it's coming up very strongly. I think that someone could be revealing 
feelings to you or just opening a conversation like, hey, Scorpio, you make me feel a certain way. You make me feel good. It could be coming through as a compliment, you know, um, a letter, a text, an email. I definitely feel right now intuitively that there's someone that wants to reveal something to you about how they feel. And it doesn't have to be just about romance, of course, but there is something. Six of Cups, yeah, definitely. And the Devil card is here. I'm always happy to see this card come through. Um, again, I love the challenging cards and I feel like they bring so much soul medicine. And I know now after years and years of reading cards that my number one goal with the tarot is to kind of reframe and change people's perspective of cards, especially when we are scared of cards. Um, I don't know why I'm hearing reparenting the cards. It's not about that. But the Six of Cups to me speaks a lot about that. Reparenting parts of yourself. Um, 11, 11 on the clock as I'm saying that. So someone is definitely working on that. Reparenting parts of yourself. So it could be your inner little one, you know, inner teenager. Something that you have been healing, yes, but something that you haven't addressed yet. It's like you only scratched the surface of that that topic or that energy, that emotion. And there is what I'm seeing when my eyes are closed. It's like someone diving into the depth of their feeling. And again, for some of you, it's going to be about reparenting a part of yourself. And when I say that, and I'm not going to get into this whole inner child thing because I'm not a psychologist, of course. And there's a lot of resources out there. But sometimes, depending on how you were raised, um, there was things that your parent could not give you. You know, even if you had amazing parents, they are not perfect and they did their best. If you had not so good caretakers, um, there are parts of yourself that you want to reparent, you know, being able to tell this scared part of yourself, I'm here no matter what, no matter who hurts us, no matter how many heartbreaks and the challenges, I have you no matter what. And this is something that is very important to me in my own healing journey, but also with the tarot, um, talking about those things. Because we do that every day. Every day when you show up for yourself and when you reclaim your magic and when you do something that comes from you, not something that was taught to you by your parents or society, when you follow your heart, your soul purpose, you're reparenting a part of yourself. And I think that is that it's a big topic that not enough people talk about, especially with the tarot. So the devil card is here. Um, devil card, of course, is connected to the sign of Capricorn, which is a very hard working energy. The devil is connected to the things that we are bound to. But it's also inviting us to give ourselves a little break, you know, that pleasure is our birthright. We are allowed to desire things. We are allowed to feel things. And a message that's coming through right now is, and I don't know who it's for, but I'm going to say it. Um, you're not crazy. You're just passionate. And there's something here also about embracing how passionate you are about something. So the five of wands, again, that I keep going back to, I feel is very important. It could be external energy is trying to come through right now, like certain people's perspective or how they tell you you're too much, you're too passionate, you're too obsessive, um, you're too clingy or this or that, whatever their opinion are. There's something here about that saying, I'm not too much. I'm not crazy. I'm passionate. 
And this is how I want to live my life, being a passionate person, a deep person. It's never boring with a Scorpio because you guys have that depth. You guys have this je ne sais quoi that is very, yes, it's mysterious and you are obviously known, known for that, sorry, but there's something else. There's something about the Scorpio energy that is... It's very hard for me to put my finger on it because I don't think I'm supposed to know exactly what it is. I think I'm supposed to discover it as I am spending time with my Scorpio friends and as I am diving into my own rising sign, which is Scorpio, you know, studying it and living it. So again, I feel like there's been people who made you feel like you were too much. And that could have been a huge blockage, especially in your romantic life, in, in your most precious relationship. Kind of blocking parts of yourself because you're scared to say like, I want you, I want this, I'm completely invested in this. So is it a fear of sounding clingy? I don't know what it is. I think you are releasing fear. I think you are in the process of doing that. So, as I said, when you see the Queen of Cups, especially next to a card of healing like the Six of Cups, it's deep. It's not just one layer. There's many, many things to address, and there's a lot of things that are hidden, and a lot of feelings that are hidden. It's coming up to the surface, and I think that there's this moment for you where you're just like, F it. I might be too much. I don't care. I'm passionate. I want this. And I'm not going to wait for it to happen. I'm going to make it happen. And the devil card also, it's a lot about people, how people judge us sometimes for living our life the way we want to live it. There's this rebel energy here. Uh, which you're definitely familiar with, Scorpio. Some people are uncomfortable sometimes because you are free. That might be the thing I was looking for earlier. Whatever energy you are in, and of course I know that some people sometimes feel trapped in relationship, at in their job, and in toxic cycles, but there's this freedom to you, Scorpio, that... I'm very attracted to, I'm very connected with, to, connected with. It, it's kind of pulling me in. Um, because the day that you're able to say, I don't care if this person thinks I'm too much, I don't care if me living my life the way I want to makes you feel uncomfortable, I don't care. That to me is freedom. Very world card energy. You know, this naked person just... <sighs> Free from all of the heavy external energies. Knight of Wands is here. So there's something about your confidence switching, expanding. It's like a burst of confidence. And the way you move in the world is very um, sure. Like, okay, I know. Again, with the Sun card, we're getting a lot of clarity. Also, Hermit. Hermit shines a light through the material world. It helps you see who you really are without, you know, without the looks and without the money and without the material, superficial aspect of everything. It's like who you really are, what's in your heart. Again, what makes your heart sing? And this is going to be at the center of your world from now on. And I think... Whoever this reading is for, I think you've been struggling with that. It could be because of old beliefs, because of society, because, again, you had to do what you had to do to survive. You know, we're all doing our best to navigate this crazy world. Um, but here, there's this massive shift in energy. We have the Lover's card and the Knight of Pentacles. Interesting. We have the Knight of Wands, Knight of Pentacles... And the lover's card at the center. But notice how both knights are kind of, you know, they're not facing each other. This is very interesting. So, again, this 
very thin line between what I have to do, being adaptable, practical, um, productive, and then with the Nine of Wands, this other side of like passion and letting the heart lead the way and not just your schedule. There's this balance here that seems just finally you're getting there. Finally. And again, clarity. The sun is showing up. There's all yellow, blue cards here to me. This is a, a very good symbol of clarity. Your mind is, your mind has been decluttered, it seems like. So I don't know if it comes from finally sharing something, telling someone, I want this, I like you, this is where I stand. There's this release that happened and it made space in your mind you know it created clarity and it feels good and i think that whatever path you are on it's leading you to not only the opportunity you know the possibility of finding true love like a real soulmate connection but it's helping you see clearly the real soulmate the one in the mirror you know and i think that when we choose to focus on the things that we love, it's easier to find the soulmate in the mirror. You know, we're not shaming ourselves for doing the things that we don't want, for forcing ourselves in, in, into, into something, forcing ourselves to fit in a mold that just is not meant for us. Um, I like that. I think that the past year for you, Scorpio, has been about letting go of the things that you've outgrown, relationship, jobs, energy, practices, maybe toxic behavior. You've outgrown so many things because you're the master at transformation. It's another transformation. And even if this is, you know, we all connect Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, with transformation. It's not just like a walk in the park. Transforming is freaking hard. It's painful. But you do it time and time again. So it's like you're becoming a master at it, really. And you're able to lead by example. And there's a big difference between being a boss, you know. I feel like a lot of people say that. Um, she's, she's a boss. He's a boss. But... There's a difference between being a boss and a leader. A leader leads by example. A leader is ruling with his heart and a boss just dictates. And there's something here about that. Again, this beautiful contrast between the earth energy and the fire energy. I like that. If you have fire and earth in your chart, this reading could definitely be for you. So I'm going to take the Hermetic Tarot and I'm going to dive deeper into this reading. I want to know the five, of, the Queen of Cups. I, I'm very attracted to the Queen of Cups right now. It's like my eyes won't, won't look anywhere else. So what do I need to know about the Queen of Cups? Okay. Pisces energy, Gemini energy could be important. Hmm. Eight of Cups and Ten of Swords, so massive releasing energy, an ending of some sort. So maybe you've experienced some type of ending recently, and I think that there's this sense of honoring this ending. Let's say you're choosing to not interact with a certain friend or... You're done with, um, it could be things like you're done with gossiping. You're done with interacting with people that are toxic, that don't make you feel good. You're done with social media. You're done with whatever you've been releasing. It was for your greater good. And there could definitely be a chance that you revisit this energy in the future. But for now, it's kind of laying on the compost pile. It's transforming as you are, but in different ways. Um, there's so many channelings coming through right now. And I know I'm just, I feel sometimes like my inner critic is like, stop talking, you're talking too much. 
Um, that's just me. That's my own issue. Um, there's something that wants to come through. It's like you're getting downloads. You're getting messages from your guides, from, you know, beloved dead, the angels. For some of you, it's God. Whatever you call this force that's bigger than you, whatever you believe in, you're getting constant messages. And I think that it could be a little overwhelming, to be honest, like asking yourself, is this my inner critic? Is this my nervous system, my ego? Or is this actually a message I'm channeling from spirit? So I want to pick cards around that. Let me know in the comments if you feel like sharing Scorpio. Do you feel like there has been this expansion, this new light kind of shine on your intuition? Because you're very connected right now. There is this direct connection with spirit with you and i don't know how to put it into words it's a feeling i'm getting and i have um i have this feeling that one of you is probably gonna reach out and tell me like this is this is how i've been feeling you know this ten of wands since the wands can be energy there's like this overload of energy and it's important that you take the time to recharge and not burn yourself out because it's not just the things you have to do in life. It's also your intuition and how much you're receiving and maybe how much you're keeping also. You know, if you do spiritual work, if you interact with clients, if you deal with a lot of people, you know, on a daily basis, make sure to cleanse your energy. I don't want to sound woo-woo right now, but it's true. I think like you've been building up a lot of people's energy. There's sadness. There's excitement. It's too much. And there's a lot that does not belong to you is what I'm sensing. So a breathing practice, cleansing with water, whatever feels right. You know, saging your freaking house. I don't know how you do it, but... There is a need to cleanse, cleanse your spiritual tools, cleanse yourself, maybe your house and using the words, you know, words are spells saying out loud. I'm releasing the energy that are not mine to hold. I'm releasing everything that I've been that's been building up uh, in my aura, in my in my energy. Um, and I think that. Just doing that consciously will help you a lot because I'm having a hard time enjoying all the beauty I'm seeing here because there's something, again, like the mind is still clutter, even if you've been working clearly on decluttering. Uh, Princess of Pentacles is here and the Emperor. Hmm. This is very interesting. Um... Again, look, even on the Princess of Pentacles, there's fire, there's flames, but there's this massive pentacles. I want to know what it is. What is this connection to earth and fire? Is it literal fire? Is it, again, this inner battle because your wish, your goal is to make a living out of your passion I think I think it's exactly it because it feels so right when I say it. There's a new beginning here. Someone taking up space in the world. I am here. Look at me. This is what I'm good at. I want to make this my goal, my purpose. This is the legacy I want to leave behind. It's starting slowly but surely to make sense in, in your mind like what you were born to do. And it sounds very intense, but it feels like this is all connected to your healing journey and choosing yourself and blocking other people's negativity, releasing the neg negativity. I feel like you carried with you for a very long time old stories because of how people said, Scorpio, you cannot do this. This is not realistic. This is too much. You're too much. Come on, ground yourself. Come on, stop, you know, fantasizing. 
Someone tried to take your magic away from you, but they did not succeed. There's no way you can take away Scorpio's magic. And here there's this reclaiming of that. Um, is it going to be hard? Yeah, it's going to be challenging. It's never easy to step in our power. It's so easy to talk about those things and say that, okay, Scorpio, you're stepping into your power. It's so easy for any reader to say that, but to truly do it, to actively take the steps in life and say, this is me. I don't care. I'm taking up more space. Um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. And also in the Hermetic version, uh, the emperor is the son of the morning. How you start your day is a big topic for me with the emperor because, you know, I learned to read tarot a long time ago with using the this exact deck, the Hermetic version. So to me, emperor is a lot about, hey, how you start your day? What is the first thing that you do? What are the little things that you do on a daily basis that supports your bigger goals and there's something here that needs to be adjusted uh, it could be starting a new practice it could be being careful of your you know cell phone consumption like how much time you spend online how much time you spend on your cell phone what do you consume are you watching things that help you grow that support your growth um Stay away from the gossip. Stay away from the gossip and stay away from the things that don't nourish you. Right now is a time to learn. It's a time to lead by example, as I said earlier. So consuming thing that nourishes you, that teaches you something so you can share it with other people and also so you can kind of use those things in your life. Okay, let me pick some Oracle card. And Scorpio, my Oracle deck that I've been working on for so long now with two amazing collaborators, which I cannot wait to tell you all about it. It's almost done. I'm going to be receiving my first copy probably next week. I'm going to be able to test it and then it's going to be published and ready for you to use. And I can't stop smiling because I had the best experience collaborating with two fabulous artists, uh, which one of them is a Scorpio and she's fantastic. Um, so Sam, if you're watching, I just want to say I absolutely love you and collaborating with you was an honor. So yeah, uh, very soon you'll hear about our oracle deck which is channeled from my own teachings and all the things I talk in my readings and it's going to be wrapping up beautifully all the readings I do and I think it's going to be a great spiritual tool for you guys also so yeah uh, stay tuned we have hold your vision that's it Scorpio hold your freaking vision stay in your lane keep your eyes on your own paper and don't let anyone tell you that your dreams are too big. And especially don't let anyone tell you that it's too late. Oh boy, oh boy, I've heard that so many times. Um, it's never too late. And I don't care what people say. I don't care that society is obsessed with young people. It seems like it's never too late to accomplish something big. It's never too late to have the biggest success of your life. Never too late to reorient yourself and try something new. Don't let society or old beliefs tell you that it's too late for you. And that's a big, big message that's coming through. And I have surrender to the divine, the full moon energy. That's it. Hold your vision. Release negativity. Release expectations also especially from other people and surrender to the divine, whatever that means for you. To me personally, surrendering to the divine is, is really about opening my, my heart, you know, saying, what if, what if something amazing happened this week? You know, instead of always preparing for the worst, I am opening myself for possibilities and for the best, you know, let's just say it. It's not about... 
good vibes only and a Pollyanna type of attitude because life is not just rainbows and butterflies, but can we, you know, prepare for the best also and not just prepare for the worst? You know, is it asking too much? I don't know. I feel like personally for me, it's even weird to just say that. I hate the good vibes type of energy people. It's just not me. I don't like that. I don't feel like it's balanced, especially with the Scorpio energy. It's the darkness is inevitable. It's so important to dwell into the dark, not dwell into the darkness, but take a trip there once in a while and face your shadow and work with your shadow and your inner critic. And there's something here that felt very negative that is being released and it's making space for the good stuff, for the sun, for a soulmate, soulmate in the mirror, reconciliation, healing. This is a beautiful freaking reading, my friend. <laughs> I'm very happy that I got to share that with you. So Scorpio, I'm sending love. Take exquisite care of yourself and we'll talk very, very soon. Bye.